Welcome back to V8 TV. Last time we built the short block on our 1969 Camaro's small block Chevy engine. And today, we're finishing it up. On our last episode, we put together the short block for our small block Chevy. Uh, this included installing the crankshaft, checking bearing clearances, installing the pistons and rods, and checking uh, the torque on all of our ARP fasteners. We also installed the timing chain cam, so today we're going to show you how to degree a camshaft. So we've got our cam and lifters installed. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to degree the cam. And what that means is we're going to compare the cam to the cam card and make sure we got the right cam because sometimes it happens the wrong cam gets stuffed in the wrong box and uh, also make sure that everything's been machined accurately so the cam's installed where it's supposed to be. Uh, this particular timing set we're using has other options to advance retard the cam. We may or may not use that. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different timing sets to take care of this. Uh, some of them you can really fine-tune and get the cam exactly where it's supposed to be. Uh, we'll just look and see what we find here. To degree a camshaft, you just need the cam itself installed and uh, lifters on generally number one cylinder. Uh, you can also do the cylinder that's 180 degrees beyond number one, but number one's always the easiest. Uh, you need a degree wheel, uh, something to use as a pointer, a piston stop, and a dial indicator. So what you do is you uh, set up your degree wheel, and this is where you use the piston stop, uh, you get it close to what looks like top dead center, uh, install your pointer, back the engine up, put your piston stop in, crank the engine gently until the piston stops, and then you go the other way around, you know, 200 and some degrees through the rotation until the piston stops the other way. Measure uh, how many degrees before and after you are on your pointer, do some math, get your pointer so that you're at true top dead center. Once you're there, uh, we set up our dial indicator and we measure the uh, lobe lift and when it occurs relative to the degree wheel. Uh, so you set your dial indicator up uh, with the pointer on the lifter and you don't necessarily have to have the dial indicator at zero as long as you record where you start to find when you're on the base circle of the cam uh, and how much movement you have then you can judge when and how high the cam is lifting the lifter. When you're checking the, uh, the lift uh, you're actually, like I said earlier, doing two things at once. Uh, the data that you want to look at on the cam card is your duration at 50 thousandths and your intake center line. So those two things you need to be looking at on the degree wheel. So as your lift comes up 50 thousandths, check your degree wheel and see if that's within spec of what your uh, cam shift should be. And once you've gone through the whole procedure to find the intake center line, if that's off, your uh, duration should be off the same amount. A lot of times when you put a cam in, you're using a bunch of aftermarket parts. You've got a crankshaft that could be 50 years old at this point. It may not have been machined perfectly, so you don't know that the timing marks and the keyways and everything is perfect to get the camshaft uh, aligned right where you want it. Uh, in this case, uh, everything checked out. The intake center line was spot on. If it hadn't been correct, uh, you can adjust the amount of timing, sometimes with a set screw, sometimes with offset keys, sometimes with a different timing set altogether. Uh, either way, products are available to get the cam where you want it. 